What up, gang? It's your boy Zot back with another banger. Hey, look, today I really want to break down some of the differences in our traditional breeding practices like selective breeding and hybridization versus the more modern breeding practices like gene editing and CRISPR technology. So, we ain't gonna hold you up forever. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Get it! Wow. Like, comment, share, subscribe, you heard me? Yeah, you know it. Turn up the leaf blow, ain't the long boy. He smoked sour. Should've been a hippie, should've been a shower. Bread with no dread, black cock, oh yeah. Another thing, don't forget to join the Discord. All right, gang, so let's take a look at the definition of selective breeding. Selective breeding, also known as artificial selection, is a traditional method used in agriculture and horticulture to develop plants and animals with specific desirable traits. Uh, it involves choosing parent plants with favorable characteristics and breeding them together to produce offspring that inherit those same exact traits. Selective breeding, you hear me say the word all the time. And it really is exactly what it sounds like. You are basing your selections off of our inheritable traits, our desired traits. And it's as simple as breeding those with the desirable traits together so that we cull out and remove those that do not possess those desirable traits. And it's a lot of inbreeding. Um, in most cases, um, we need to definitely expose our recessive traits to have the best opportunity at selection. Uh, we definitely need to take a strong, good, patient look into our F1 uh, generation which is our hybrid generation right we, 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 we know how important heterosis is and the potential to locate and find hybrid vigor during our F1 and our F2s are just going to expose those recessive traits so when we think in terms of selective breeding we are selecting offspring matching those traits so that those traits are inheritably passed down right they're in inherited to the offspring all right hybridization our second traditional breeding method right let's look at the definition hybridization is a traditional plant breeding technique that involves crossing two different plant varieties or animal or species whatever species it may be uh, to produce a hybrid with traits from both parents all right this process aims to combine desirable characteristics from each parent to create an offspring with enhanced qualities. Remember, hybrid vigor. And a pretty cool example of hybrid vigor is with the liger, a lion crossed with a tiger. I mean, look at the size of this beast. Right, hybrid vigor is when we have offspring that outperform both parents, right? And um, hybrid, hybridization um, gives you the ability to possibly locate heterosis or hybrid vigor, and you may uh, find that gem, that jewel, that treasure, that gold in your F1s only. It's only available in your F1s. Don't sell your F1s, man. You're throwing away hybrid vigor. <laughs> the most precious of gems within our catalog, right? Within our population, rather. Um, so, um, improve yield, disease resistance, uh, environmental adaptability. Um, all of these things come along with hybrid vigor. And let's not forget how important hybridization is for genetic diversity we create hybrids to increase is it is the largest amount of genetic diversity that we'll experience within the population or the inbred line because um that is the initial start of the two 
parents from two different worlds coming together. So that is the alpha in the essence in the beginning of our genetic diversity. And we remember how important F2s are as well. Also containing tons of genetic diversity, but a different kind of genetic diversity. Recessive traits that can only be exposed there in the F2s. So they are just as special. Don't sell your F2s, man. Stop it. F1s, F2s, off limits. No debate. No talk about it. Those are off limits. All right. All your tools in your toolbox technically should be off limits. And I was speaking to a good friend of mine, Chris. You guys may know him as Mr. Grow It. And um, we were speaking and I was explaining to him up and coming breeders, they don't necessarily understand, take it seriously, seek the knowledge um, because they don't completely understand yet uh, the toolbox. And F1, F2, F3, F4, S1, BX, BX this, BX that, but all of these are just tools in your toolbox. And when you understand how to use each tool, if I'm a carpenter um, and I have all of these tools in my toolbox, but I have yet to understand how to use any of them, I'll never step out of the house to take my job seriously or go on a job. It just won't happen. I just don't have the confidence. I don't have the skill set. I don't have the knowledge that's required in order to get it done, right? But once you start to understand each tool, how important your F1 is because of uh, heterosis and hybrid vigor, how important your F2s are to your inbred line and your upcoming project because of the recessive traits, how important F3, F4, because now at this point, you understand which direction to go, left, right, up, down. You understand how to use your tools and which direction you're going. So when we're doing F3, F4, F5, that's literally just to achieve a desired outcome. Whatever that desired outcome is up to you. I, I you know, I, I, I tend to get a question uh, and they say, well, Zah, um, how long will it take me um, to take out the hermaphroditic trait? Will I have to go to F5 or F4? Uh, or what happens during F3? Or what? So, so that is all subjective to your desired outcome. You have to have a plan, a purpose. Before you make a turn in the whip, you need to know where you're going, right? You don't just hop in the whip and just start turning, right? It makes no sense if you don't have an objective or a destination before you hop in the whip. So, this, so, so you can look at F3, F4, F5, F6 as the road, right? Though that is the road, and, and, and those are the different roads you need to take to get where you are going. But you don't hop on the roads, you don't go F3, F4, F unless you already have a destination to go. Because once you have a destination, you'll then understand whether you need to go up, down, left, or right. And that's just the importance of understanding the tools in your toolbox. And like I was telling Chris, breeders will take pollen chuckers, breed, whatever you want to call them, they will take this serious and they will take the necessary steps once they understand their tools in the toolbox, how important they are, and how to use each tool to get the desired outcome that they want to achieve. All right, so what does CRISPR stand for? CRISPR stands for Clustered, Regularly, Interspaced, Short, Palindromic repeats so um it's a precise genome editing tool that allows for targeted modifications to a to, a, to dna all right we can we can target specific loki's right and you'll hear that word loki often as you advance your um and, and loki is uh, another word for location where we can um determine the placement of certain alleles in genes. Genes um, are located in certain spots within DNA. 
And the DNA is a long strand of information, right? It's information that tells everything about our makeup. CRISPR also involves the use of what we know as Cas9 protein, guided by RNA molecules to make targeted changes to an organism's DNA. Now, we um, talk about RNA in behind the scenes a lot. Um, RNA, the difference between RNA and DNA, and we'll have a video in the future for that, but really we wanna learn DNA first, right, before we get into RNA, because RNA is a whole nother uh, subject, and then we, uh, from there, we start to learn um, genetic code and how to decipher the code and read it. CRISPR is perfect for when we want to target specific genes, right? And we want to get it done in a, a less uh, costly um, way than most other genetic engineering methods, right? It's it's um, a newer technology, um, but it focuses primarily on sp specific targeting of certain genes. While uh, genetic engineering um, is much more wide range and it focuses, you'll, you'll usually hear genetic engineering tied directly to um, like medicine. Uh, and you know, um, when, when, with CRISPR, it's usually more related to uh, biomedical uh, in, in things like that, but we'll get into you know. I don't. I want to keep it um, real simple when we think in terms of some of the modern, because we won't be using those modern methods until we have mastered the traditional methods, right? And the primary differences is the traditional methods are much more time consuming, of course, right? It requires much more patience, years upon years, right? Sp especially. Um, if you deal in with certain organisms, uh, we, when we think in terms of animals and plants, right, we need to create these populations by hand, uh, and it takes years upon years. There could be strong opinions when we think in terms of CRISPR and genetic engineering methods and things like that, because now um, science has opened the gates to do things that, you know, we like, what? You want to? pre-design your baby no oh, man that's a little now we getting a little crazy now man you know you want to make sure your baby has blue eyes with and make sure he's tall and make sure that he's athletic and, and probably 99 percent chance he'll play football and with gen, with genetic engineering you could do things like that um and when it comes to the traditional methods that we practice uh it's more so the hands-on right um, it's been a really good topic of conversation, right? Um, we got pigeons tomorrow, so I need y'all to pull up and support. We got pigeons tomorrow. Listen, I got, I've been, I put together this cool package and a couple of the more recent orders uh, from ZazaGenetics.com will, will let you know about, about these cool packs I put together. Um, just a little gift bundle, something like. From just to show love from uh, from me to my supporters, um, and they are. Um, hold on, let me go get one. And show you. All right, cool. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. All right, so look, all orders, all supporters, um, will come with a freebie, of course, but we'll also get this cool Zaza Genetics brand bundle, swag bundle, whatever you want to call it, something light, something small, nothing crazy. Um, one vinyl slap. Team Zaza button, you know, pin it up to you. One Team Zaza circle regular sticker. That's the vinyl slap, okay. And a magnet for your fridge, man. So you got your magnet, your circle sticker label thingy, whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> a vinyl slap and a team Zaza button. So that's for all my supporters. Um, if you'd like to win this bundle pack, drop a number in the comments, any number from one to a hundred. 
and hopefully we'll have more than 100 comments and we get that done by making sure you comment, make sure you like, and if you aren't already subscribed, it's how you show love and support. Um, make sure you subscribe. It helps out a ton. We ch we're trying to build the channel, um, and it's a, a fairly new channel, so we definitely need subscribers. Make sure you catch us tomorrow at Pigeons Live. Tune in with Pigeons to see what time it is. I don't want to give you the wrong time, but just stay tuned. Um, my brother always drops these awesome lives. Uh, we just did Mr. the Grow It. Uh, Grow Talk series as well, so that'll probably be dropping in the next couple weeks, so stay tuned for that. And if you need some of the best grow equipment in the land, make sure you visit acinfinity.com and use code TEAMZAZA for a discount at checkout. If you want one of these cool Zaza bundles, man, pick a number from 1 to 100. I'm picking three winners. Three winners, and anybody who buys packs, any anybody who supports... Uh, whether it's an auction, whether it's uh, uh, off the website, no matter what it is, you'll grab one of these packs as well. Um, and uh, make sure to check us out in Discord, man. We in there every night, 9 p.m. Thank you for your support. I see the comments. Much love. I try my best to get to all of them. Uh, but I'm busy. I'm still in college. Still got a 4.0. Uh, still in college, though. 4.0 GPA. Um, still work full-time job as well, um, as well as YouTube and Team Zaza and Zaza Genetics and any other things we got going on. So thank you for your support. I will do my best to get back to your comments. I, I feel the love, though. Um, it's love much back. And uh, until we meet again, gang. She's smoking that ready. I hit the data. I'm sure niggas ain't ready. Breaking it down. It look like a Freddy. The goo in the Mac. I be feeling so heavy. A couple of rounds come from the dead. Cause we some gorillas and moving it heavy.